There's a new heat pump on the market that is taking the American scene by storm, and that is the Sonko 2 heat pump water heater or Sonko 2 air to water heat pump in conjunction with the Harvest smart thermal battery system. And if you're just tuning into this channel for the first time, we put out several videos on this product because it truly is a unique product for a lot of reasons that we're going to touch on in this video and also some that we touch on in other videos on the various aspects because there's a lot of different nuances to this particular product that we like to touch on. So I'll make sure to link some of those videos at the end of this video so you can check those out as well if you find this product interesting. And in this video, like I said, we're going to answer the question, will this product revolutionize American HVAC? Well, the truth is air to water heat pumps are actually nothing new. Forced air hydronics are nothing new and battery storage technology is nothing new. But this particular product is new in the sense that it incorporates all those things into one. So the Harvest heat pump system is a smart thermal battery storage system that pairs with a Sonko 2 heat pump water heat heater to store hot water throughout the day. It ties that system in with a traditional forced air system or air handler, as well as a forced air hydronics coil. So that way, when you turn on the thermostat in your home to call for heat, that forced air hydronics coil takes hot water from the Sonko 2 air to water heat pump in the water heater storage tank, and it circulates it through that coil so that you can heat your home. And so what makes this product so unique and different is that instead of storing electricity or energy in the form of a electricity, it stores energy in the form of heat energy, which is how a lot of people use energy when they're trying to store it in a battery. Anyways, they're trying to use it for the purpose of heating and cooling their home or heating their water for their domestic hot water purposes. If you're anything like me, when you hear about a new revolutionary product, I'm somewhat skeptical. But more than that, some of the questions I immediately start to ask is yes, but how reliable is this product? And what are the stats? Because anytime you know, a new car, for example, comes to market, you you have probably heard people, you know, give the advice of, hey, whatever you do, when a new car comes out, don't buy the first car in that model series, because when it comes out, they're likely going to have a lot of problems. And you're basically the guinea pig and working out all of their R&D for them. And so wait a couple years, anytime they have a new model, and then you won't have as many issues because it's, you know, a newer model. Well, the good news is that this product is actually new to North America, but it's actually not that new altogether. It's actually been in use in Japan for several decades decades and has been battle tested. Uh, there's several hundred thousand units installed worldwide. And there's also several of those units are installed throughout Europe as well. So it's been battle tested in a variety of different climates, and they have worked out a lot of those kinks. Now, there's a couple reasons I think a lot of people will be drawn to this product and whether or not it will gain widespread momentum is hard to call at this point. But I know that it ticks a lot of the boxes that we'll talk about in this video. Now, first off, one of the things that's so unique about this product is that it can do a lot of things that no other heat pump system can do. It can heat water for your domestic hot water purposes. It can also heat that water to be used in a forced air hydronics coil for your home. And in addition, it can be stored as energy for use later in the form of thermal energy with the harvest system, making this a smart thermal battery. And that combination of applications is what makes this particular product so unique and really stand out to me. In addition, one of the things that I think a lot of people will gravitate to is with with the most recent refrigerant phase out of R410A, it's actually a long phase out schedule, but we just had a phase out of R22 back in 2020. And I think people are tired of planned obsolescence where refrigerants are constantly phased out from manufacturers. And this is something that removes that because it uses CO2 as a refrigerant and CO2 by definition has the lowest GWP on the planet. So there would never be a reason to phase out CO2 as a refrigerant. Now, there are some caveats that we've touched on in other videos, like why this system doesn't work for air conditioning. And it's not that it doesn't work for air conditioning, it's just that you have a second system that handles the air conditioning component of this, and it all integrates and ties in together. But a lot of people will often ask, why aren't we already using CO2 as a refrigerant if we have access to all these other refrigerants? The answer, in case you couldn't tell, obviously, there's a money factor at play, and they make a lot of money on refrigerants. And so obviously, there's a desire to keep some level of refrigerants in play. But it's not so simple, because CO2 as a refrigerant, unfortunately, doesn't work for air conditioning or doesn't work for air conditioning efficiently. So it can't be a drop in replacement for some of these other refrigerants, right? If it could, would you see more of it? Probably, which is why I think we're going to see other refrigerants like R290 come into play, especially in future years with more of these phase outs, because R290 is another refrigerant that functions very well for heating, also works for cooling and works on a monoblock basis, meaning it works as an air to water heat pump. So it will actually meet the needs 
needs of Americans quite well. Now, as far as whether or not this system will replace all heat pumps on the market, I think it will replace a lot of heat pumps in very specific applications because you're working with an air to water heat pump that also qualifies as battery storage with the harvest system because it's a smart thermal battery once the harvest pod is included in the equation. That means that this system qualifies for the 25D tax credit, which makes the price more comparable and affordable to a lot of other systems out there because it's doing more than just heating hot water and heating and cooling your home. It's also functioning from an efficiency standpoint for battery storage. And part of the reasons there's so many tax credits and incentives for this is because that does reduce some of the demand on the grid, which increases every year. And in places like California and other places where they have issues with the grid can result in rolling brownouts and or blackouts. And this is why they're putting in such sustainability measures to try and get people to take the initiative to install some of this storage technology to reduce grid demand during those peak times. Now, there'll be a few videos popping up on the screen shortly. And don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the algorithm. If you found this content helpful and or enjoyable and want more content like it, please post a comment in the comment section, letting us know what you think and whether or not you would consider one of these systems for your home. And also, if you're interested in being connected with a contractor on this system or some of the other systems we've talked about on our channel, there's a link in the description to the HVACDopeShow.com where you can actually be connected with a contractor in your area. These are contractors that we screen and reach out to on your behalf. So if you're interested in connecting with one of these contractors, please use that link in the description. There's zero cost to you. This was literally something that we created to help connect people with the best contractors in their respective markets. And some of those contractors uh, will actually end up having on the show as guests to talk about the specific things that people are facing in terms of HVAC challenges in each specific market. Because as you know, if you live in Texas, you deal with high humidity, or if you live in a high desert in California, you're dealing with extreme ambient temperatures and having contractors on from these different markets allows us the opportunity to bring a variety of information for you to help you when making decisions for how to get the best HVAC for your home. And as mentioned earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen that are related. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already, and we will catch you on the next episode.